Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mr. Pratt here, and this is Bench Dodgeball. So as you know, I'm always bringing you accessible, modifiable, and engaging content for in the gym, at home, and in the classroom. Today we're featuring a game called Bench Dodgeball, which is a great modification on a classic and often misunderstood game. Now as I've said before in previous videos, dodgeball is often greatly misunderstood. When it's used as the only activity students are doing, and safety rules are put in place, and modifications are made, and elimination style is played, dodgeball really isn't a great game. However, there are lots of variations of dodgeball, lots of modifications that make it fun, engaging, and really works on some important sports skills. And bench dodgeball is definitely one of those good modifications. One key thing you'll notice later in the video on bench dodgeball is there is not much time to be sitting out or being uninvolved in the game, and there are lots of safety rules put in place to avoid injuries. Now, of course, you can never completely remove the risk of injury, but in my opinion, that's part of the physical education program and being an active person. There's always a bit of a risk of injury, but when we teach each other and we teach students to be respectful, to play safe, play for fun, and kind of work within the rules and show respect for one another, problems are significantly less and we learn a lot as we play. Simply removing risk of injury from everything we do, I don't believe, is the way to move forward. It's not gonna help us learn how to be active. It's not gonna help us learn how to solve conflict. It's not gonna help us learn how to be respectful. So if you're gonna put dodgeball in your program, try out a game like bench dodgeball and make sure you do it right. So let's quickly dive into the setup of bench dodgeball. All right, so as you can see here, your setup for bench dodgeball is pretty similar to classic dodgeball where you have your gym divided in half by a center line with one team on each half of the playing field. Your balls are lined up on the center line, which is marked by those cones or pylons to indicate the line that cannot be crossed. So if one team is on one side, they are not allowed to cross that center line. The other team is not allowed to cross that center line either. The addition of the bench about two thirds of the way to the back wall on each side is the only real modification to bench dodgeball when compared with classic one team versus one team dodgeball. Now that bench is kind of like your prison. Anybody that you hit on the opposing team has to come onto your side and go onto one of the benches. For the purposes of my video, I've just put one bench in to keep it simple, but depending on your group size, you're gonna have to add in maybe two or three benches to keep the game engaging and make sure it stays safe. If you have a single class, one or two benches per side will be great. If you're working with double or triple classes, you're gonna need more like three or four per side. And where you place that bench is gonna be up to you and the abilities and the age of your participants. If they're unable to throw the ball very far, of course you're gonna to wanna to keep that bench a little closer to the center line, as you'll see later in the video. If they're a bit older and they can throw further, or a bit more experienced and they can throw further, you're gonna to have to back that bench up. Those are the same modifications I would make for the size of my playing field. If you have more experience, more skilled, harder throwers, you're really gonna to have to back this space up to keep the game safe and fun and enjoyable for everyone. And with less experienced players who can't throw quite as far, of course you're gonna to have to condense the space or it's gonna be impossible for them to even hit each other. All right, so now that you've seen a little bit more about the setup and heard a few rules, let's dive into some gameplay. So at the start of the game, traditionally in dodgeball, one team will be lined up on a line in front of the wall on each half of the gym and the balls are gonna be lined up on the center line. The leader is then gonna say go, and both teams rush to the middle to try and grab balls, and the game begins. There are times when I start a game and I simply avoid all the running and to the middle altogether and just leave the ball spread out in the gym, have players go back to the line and just start and have them pick up balls that are already on their side. In my opinion, this is actually a better way to start because it takes less time for setup and it avoids the possibility of collisions or twisted ankles as you approach that center line at the start of a dodgeball game. But that's gonna be up to you to determine. 
Now the first thing we gotta know about bench dodgeball is if I am hit in this game, the first thing I need to do is put my hands up on my head to indicate that I've been hit. This is what I do to help students know that people have been hit and are eliminated so they stop getting hit by the ball. Of course, being ready to move your hands down to protect yourself is important, but just keeping your hands lightly on your head is the way to go. And once I've been hit, I actually have to go onto the bench or the jail of the other team. Now, if I've been contacted by a ball, I am now in the opposing team's jail. So I am up on this bench, this is like their jail, and now it's my job to try and get out of jail. So, instead of having to sit on the ground and be bored out of my tree because I've been hit, I have an active role in this game still. To get out of jail, here's how it works. Someone on my team has to successfully throw a ball to me that I catch in the air while on the bench. If I am able to do that, I am free. So I would put my hands on my head, I'd step down from the bench, and I would make my way back to my half of the gym. Once I'm back on my half, I'm gonna take my hands off my head once I'm ready to play, and I continue playing in the game. Now there's two ways you can escape from jail. Number one is, only the player who catches the ball gets to be free. The other way is to have, if, if anybody on the bench, myself or any of my other teammates who are on the bench, may make a successful catch, the whole bench gets to be free. This is my preference as it keeps the game interesting, keeps it engaging, keeps people working together instead of competing for balls, and it prevents people from being eliminated for too long. So it's kind of like the ball that gets thrown and caught is like a key for us to unlock our jail and then everybody gets to escape. Now a few things to keep in mind while players are up on the bench. Talking about safety on the bench is really, really key. This isn't a high height, but it is definitely high enough to have some serious injury. It's low enough that we feel overly confident, high enough to cause some broken bones. So reminding students to be aware of where they are in space, if they're losing balance, and so just simply take a step down onto the floor. These kinds of things are really important. You don't want them being too close to each other, and this is why having a second or third bench might be important, depending on your group size. I also tell students that if a catch is made, both feet must still be on the bench for it to count as an escape. So I can't be leaning and catching with one foot off the bench because that's gonna make it much more likely that I'm gonna fall off or knock somebody else off the bench. So I tell students they have to have both feet planted, make a catch before they can escape. Now hopefully the benefits of this type of dodgeball are clear because instead of having to sit down and be bored, I am having an active role in my own escape once I am contacted. So I am searching for a ball, calling to my teammates to throw me a ball and I have to work on my receiving skills in order to get out. So working on that window or that basket catching technique to try and get myself out of jail. Now for me personally, I also throw in a jailbreak every once in a while, probably every minute or so. A jailbreak is when the teacher calls jailbreak and all people in all jails on both sides are free to return back to their sides. Now as a player on my half that's still in the game, I can also be working to protect my prisoners from the other team. So as we've talked about, if somebody from the opposing team is hit, they have to make their way onto my bench. I am able to then stand in front of this bench and I am able to try to block incoming balls that are being passed to the prisoners in my bench. So I can be throwing my ball, hitting balls out of the air, I can be blocking balls, okay? Or I can even try and be catching balls that are being thrown to the people in the jail on the bench to try and prevent them from escaping. Sometimes it's even a good idea to smack the ball down with your hand, even though that means you're gonna be out, you're gonna keep all of the prisoners in jail, and you're gonna sacrifice yourself to help your team succeed. Now when I play dodgeball, I play from the shoulders down as an acceptable hit. Head shots, neck shots don't count. Sometimes I even play below the waist depending on the experience and the age of my participants. Keeps things fresh when you're trying to hit people in the legs. It keeps people moving lighter on their feet and of course avoids accidental contacts with the face and neck which aren't safe and we don't want to promote 
in a phys ed class. All right, everybody, so that about does it for bench dodgeball. As I've said, this is a great modification on an often misunderstood and poorly used activity that's done often in phys ed classes. Bench dodgeball is a way to get people working on those sending and receiving skills in a more productive way. It keeps engagement levels up, it keeps things safer, keeps them fresh, keeps them fun. Just be sure you're prioritizing safety and keeping kids moving and engaged and you're sure to have some success. I also highly recommend establishing your dodgeball rules ahead of time to avoid conflict and arguments within the game. So whether you play that you can block balls with a ball or you can't, or a ball that bounces and hits you, counts or doesn't, these are things you're gonna have to establish before you start playing bench dodgeball to make sure everybody's having fun and on the same page. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit that subscribe button there. Sign up for notifications to be the first to see my weekly content. Like and share away. You know I love seeing those comments below as well. And be sure to check out some of my other dodgeball videos, which are linked in the description or can be found on the video content of my channel. But for now, this is Mr. Pratt signing off from Bench Dodgeball.